Hello and welcome once again to another Star Mini Gaming YouTube video. As always, I'm James. And this is just a real brief video that I felt kind of inspired to put together um, in response a bit to all the negativity on the internet towards Age of Sigmar. Uh, you know, not all of it is like overly harsh or overly critical. Um, some of it, you know, is more of more of what I call slight negativity or slight bias of players of classic Warhammer who, you know, um, understandably kind of, uh, kind of miss, you know, miss their old system, right? That they grew, that they grew to love. I can certainly understand that. Um, I, you know, I've been a tabletop gamer for years, as I've said in my other videos. I've played, for example, the Games Workshop Lord of the Rings game since it first came out. So that's, uh, what, about 15 years now? And that game is completely dead in this part of the States. I've, I've tried for years and years to build up, uh, build up the player base here, um, but it just hasn't worked. So I can understand, you know, kind of grieving a dead system. Um, but like I said, this is just a real short video that I wanted to put together to explain maybe if you haven't played Age of Sigmar, uh, why, you, why you should at least try it, give it a shot, uh, make a well-informed decision on whether or not it's for you. And um, in some ways to rebuttal some of the common misconceptions about the game. Uh, because I never, I've tried Warhammer Fantasy, uh, but I was never really into it. So as the video will be titled, this is Age of Sigmar from a noob's perspective as opposed to a long time Warhammer gamer. So uh, like I said, this is a video that's more focused on the positives of Age of Sigmar, not the negatives of Warhammer Fantasy Battle. I'm not juxtapositioning the positives of one against the negatives of the other. I'm focusing more on why should you try Age of Sigmar, even if you love Warhammer Fantasy. I, and for all, you know, if you love Age of Sigmar and you haven't tried Warhammer Fantasy, go ahead and give it a try as well. You know, it's a, it's not a bad game. It's just not for me. Um, ideally, I would love to have both supported by GW. Uh, you know, there's there's been rumors and leaks and supposedly confirmed, although we haven't yet seen them at the time that I'm recording this, uh, that GW is bringing back a lot of specialist games. So personally, I'd love to see them continue to support the classic Warhammer game um, just because of how many people enjoy it. I would, I never, I never wish for something that someone else enjoys to be removed. I'd rather that companies just continue to expand upon the lines to bring in more people, uh, more people to have products that they enjoy. But I understand business from a business point of view, especially uh, speaking to my GW distributor on why they shut down Warhammer Fantasy. Um, my distributor told me that it was less; than, it made up less than one percent of their sales, which is less than the paint line, uh, roughly in the same ballpark as the Hobbit game and obviously significantly less than uh, Warhammer 40k. But, um, yeah, so if you take everything you've heard about Age of Sigmar in terms of, like, negative, and maybe even some of the positive, and just throw it out the window. We're going to completely start start over. Um, I've heard a lot of people debate and discuss. I was listening to a couple older videos by Vince, who I will have his uh, channel linked in the video description below because it's well worth checking out if you're at all interested in Age of Sigmar or Warhammer Fantasy. He runs a great Warhammer-based YouTube channel. Highly recommend it. But in some of those videos, um, people were debating what really was Age of Sigmar, the game. And in one of the videos, could it become uh, really a tournament-based system? And one of the gentlemen was saying, no, it couldn't, because that went against what the game itself was. And I just wanted to contend with that uh, and say that perhaps his view of Age of Sigmar is a bit narrow. Um, I want to you know, present to you that Age of Sigmar is not a overly simplified game that has things missing, but an incredibly open game to play. I personally play about 10 different tabletop games, uh, including Lord of the Rings, Warhammer 40k, um, a couple of Mantic games such as Dreadball. Uh, I've played, I've played probably close to 15 to 20 different tabletop games consistently throughout my life. I'm not saying just pick them up once. I'm talking about like being dedicated to them. Um, and so, 
you know, I have a pretty good idea of a lot of different systems, and I don't think that Age of Sigmar is so much an underdeveloped game as a really open game. And now part of the reason for that is tabletop games in general, but especially tabletop war games that are similar to your Bolt Actions, your um, Warhammer 40K, your Warhammer Fantasy, your Age of Sigmar, your Lord of the Rings, games like that. Um, in a lot of ways, they are a much more open and creative board game. I always like to describe it to people who aren't familiar with it as I basically play board games that I construct the game board. The rules are provided, but the environment in which you play is largely your own creation or the creation of the people who set up the events that you go to. And, you know, some people kind of dog on Age of Sigmar and say, well, there's not much there, but I wanted to contend that there's, there's just more open opportunity to you as the gamer to establish your own kind of fingerprints on the game. Whenever you play Warhammer 40k, for example, being the, you know, most popular tabletop war game in the world right now, um, whenever you play that, there's a, there's a mass, there's a really, really massive section of rules, right, in the core rule book, and then each, each army has their own army book. And every time that you choose to play 40k, while you do have this massive amount of rules that are all in the game, you're picking and choosing which rules you're going to play, you and your opponent are picking and choosing which rules you're going to play within the game. So to a degree, you're creating the game every time you play it. You're, you're picking and choosing which rules you're going to use. It's not like Monopoly or most other uh, more simplified board games that have a smaller rules section than you use in every single game. In 40K, you choose, for example, uh, you know, special rules such as like different scenario rules, um, terrain rules, like what kind of terrain are you going to use, the unit rules, now the formation rules, the detachment rules, if you bring those. Um, you know, there's so many layers to the game that you choose whether or not you're bringing into every single time. So every single time you play a game like that, you are customizing what is in the game. And that's ultimately what I feel like Age of Sigmar is, but even more so. Um, yeah, and so it's like, in Age of Sigmar, really the big thing is that you have, to, really the only thing that's open to the players um, beyond what other war games and other games have is really the comp system for how you want to play it. You don't even have to have this, um, like GW built-in rules to the game to, to help balance that out. Now, obviously, if you take it to the extremes, you know, one person fields like 20 of a weaker unit, the other person fields a massive army of hundreds of units, including powerful models like Bloodthirsters and Scarbrand and all. Obviously, there's extremes that are going to throw that out of whack. Um, but GW's basic rules that they built into the system, such as the sudden death victory conditions, do kind of help to balance out the game, even if you don't use a comp system. But if you are interested in maybe a little bit more uh, of a constructed form of play, uh, with guidelines for both you and your opponent that a third party puts out so that it's a little bit more unbiased than maybe what you and your opponent can come up with on your own. Uh, there's a lot of good ones out there, and they all have kind of a different flavor and really impact, are really good choices depending on what kind of impact you want them to have on the game. Personally, um, I've played so many different games. I love the point system uh, mechanic for building for building any kind of army, right? Like in Lord of the Rings, 40K, if you've played either of those, you're very familiar with it. Or Warhammer Fantasy, you're very familiar with basic army points values, right? You say, I want to play a 1,750-point game of 40K, and then you're going to use the uh, use the rules in 40K that have points values assigned to each of the units, and you're going to just build your armies and go at it. And it's, in games, GW games especially, it's not always necessarily well balanced, but at least gives you it gives you a constraint in which you are playing. It gives you and your opponent a way to to kind of come up with uh, the way that you're going to play the game. And again, like I was saying earlier, it's part of how you put your fingerprints on the game every single time that you play a more open game like a tabletop game. Um, personally, if you haven't tried a comp system and you are familiar with more of a point system based game. I'd highly recommend the SDK system. 
Um, I go to warscrollbuilder.com, roll, war which again, I'll have in the dis video description below. Uh, there's two tabs. There's the pool and the SDK tab. I, you know, click on the SDK tab to use it. You pick what army you want, and each of the units has a points value that's assigned to it. And now the creators of it, I'm not sure if it was one or more, I can't remember, basically put in a formulaic system that they run every single model through to determine what their points values are. And I've only played a handful of games Age of Sigmar. I'm still pretty new to the game, but every single game has come down to the wire. The, the point system seems to be far more balanced than GW official points have in any of the other games. I play 40k games, <coughs> excuse me, that are much, much less evenly matched than every game of Age of Sigmar that I've played using the SDK point system. So if you haven't tried it out, I highly, highly recommend it. A lot of uh, another complaint that I see a lot is that Age of Sigmar is an overly simplistic game um, that you know an experienced gamer can't possibly enjoy. And now, as I said before, like I've been playing tabletop games for <sighs> I've been playing tabletop games for you know the vast majority of my life. I'm 25, and I've been playing tabletop games since I was about 10, so for about 15 years. And, um, honestly, Age of Sigmar, the first time I played it, and actually every time I've played it, I'd say it's the most fun I've had playing a tabletop game in a long time. Uh, it's, it's refreshing. It is, it is lighter in the rules than a lot of other games, but, for example, I've been playing a lot of X-Wing as well, and I'd say there's more rules to it, um, than there are in X-Wing. If you include all the war scrolls and unit special rules, I'd say it's more complex than X-Wing now. That's not a knock on X-Wing. X-Wing is a great game. I'm just saying I don't think it's as, that Age of Sigmar is as simplistic as some people think it is. And it, it is something that just about anyone can pick up. You know, age-wise, doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, probably probably some seven, eight-year-olds can pick it up and play pretty well. Uh, so it's really an open game to just about anyone walking in. But there's things to it that... You know, if you are, if you're an experienced war gamer, and uh, and if you're a bit of a history buff like myself in terms of when it comes to uh, war throughout the years, um, there's a lot of things to it that are a bit more complex. Now, it is a it is a skirmish based game, so you don't have set formations that your units have to move in. Now, that's not to say that the formations, like that, you can physically put your models in, are not beneficial. Um, you know, Lord of the Rings game, I'll, I've brought it up before, I'll bring it up again, because I have more experience with that game than any other game, because I've played it, basically, for the entire time that I've played tabletop games. Um, it, it is also a skirmish-based game that has no set formations. You know, like in Warhammer Fantasy, you have more of the block, rank-and-file formations that typically you have to stick to. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the game on a uh, deeper level to know if that's the only way you can ever run a unit. There may be things that kind of break that mold. But, uh, that, but typically, you have more of the rank and file blocks. And in the Lord of the Rings game, being a skirmish game, you move individual models, they're not even squads. But there's times where a good shield wall or a formation that you build, whether you know it's kind of like a, a wedge or a V formation or whatever with your cavalry, for example, there's actually benefits to that. Um, and in Age of Sigmar, it's, it's the same thing. Now, the benefits are different than some other games, such as Classic Warhammer, but they're still there. If you are moving in, for example, with units, and you you have to consider weapon ranges and pile-in ranges, because in, in Age of Sigmar, you have like a true weapon range. Like in 40K, for example, there's certain ranges of like, if you're within a certain amount of inches of a model in combat that's within your same squad, you fight in close combat. That's not the case in Age of Sigmar. Like, the true range from models matters. And so depending on how you uh, reorganize your or your, your squad and the formation you kind of put them in, um, in that massive combat, you can actually prevent your opponent from getting to a unit that may be a little bit further back that you want to protect, um, or you can kind of sweep around them to get more attacks in for your squad, things like that. Like, um, or if you're not even in close combat yet, the way that you 
set up your units on the table to screen for other units and whatnot. Like there are legitimate ways to use formations of your units in the game, whether you're tightly packing or spreading them further apart. There's, there's tactical reasons to do so. Um, and along that same line, the terrain is simplified in the game, but there's also a bit of depth to it. And it, it's a really, I really enjoy the terrain system. If you're parked in terrain, you get a cover bonus, which is plus one to your armor unless otherwise stated. And then certain terrains, such as the realm gates, have additional effects that you can roll for or are preset in the game that, that impact the game a bit more. So, you know, I hope you can see, just as I'm explaining it, that the core rules may only be four pages, um, but between all the war scroll special rules and the terrain special rules, and you know just kind of things that come into effect like tactics that come into effect in game that kind of affect how things interact with each other not necessarily in the rules but as a result of the rules there's a lot more depth to Age of Sigmar than a lot of people give it credit for um, yeah and it's it's a very scalable game that's one thing I really like about it um, for example, the Lord of the Rings game, again, uh, is a game that works well at a very, very, very small scale, but can also scale up if you don't mind spending a large amount of time. Like, the rules for it and Age of Sigmar both are well, especially Age of Sigmar, I'd say Age of Sigmar even more, are well written to where you can field a very small number or a large number, and the only real difference in terms of how the rules interact um, with the models that are in the game and how well the game plays is just the amount of time it takes to play. Uh, I've played, you know, again, I'm, I'm pretty new to the game, but I've played really, really, really small Age of Sigmar games with probably like about 10 models for one side and about 25 for another. So, I, you know, I'd say that's pretty small to a game where each team had about 60 models and both played equally well and obvious and the the game where each each side had about 60 models uh, it played as such that I'm like I would have enjoyed bringing even more if I had if I had enough models in my collection so you know to kind of sum it all up um, Age of Sigmar if you haven't played it and you're and you know you've just looked at what's on the internet maybe you've considered it but you've been kind of discouraged by what other people have said uh, definitely definitely give it a, give it a try it's easy to pick up but there's multiple layers to master to the game, um, which is a big thing. You know, you don't want, at least I don't want, uh, a game that's so complicated that it takes a really, really long time to learn it, which is one of the reasons I'm kind of stayed off of some games like Infinity. I'd really like to try it, but the rule book seems a bit daunting to learn at first. Um, uh, but it, it's quick to pick up, but there's a lot of layers to the game, and you can spend quite a bit of time, um, you know, building your army and kind of thinking about the synergies that are uh, available to you um, within the war scrolls, you know, what unit works well with another unit. There's a lot of fluff, obviously, with the entire 30 years of the old world um, that you can learn as kind of the background for some of the armies. And not all the armies are yet updated, so we don't know exactly where they're all going from a storyline purpose, but at least it gives you some information on the rough direction that the army will probably continue in so you can kind of get an idea of what you're interested in. So I hope that helps. Uh, I, you know, wanted to see more positivity out on the internet, more people giving Age of Sigmar a fair shot as opposed to just hounding on it whether or not they've actually tried it. I doubt that a lot of people who have had real negative things to say about the game have actually given it a fair try. Um, but again, until next time, this is James and Happy gaming.